this video's topic will be about the looping effect. Now, don't be confused, I'm not talking about the phonological loop or any loop of habits. What I'll be talking about is a different kind of loop in mental health. Um, but bear in mind, I'm not the greatest speaker. In fact, I'm not quite good with presenting. Um, I'm sorry if my eyes are darting back and forth because um, I am looking at a script because I'm really nervous, even talking in front of a screen. Uh, I think I should also point out that I'm an undergrad of psychology, so I'm not the most reliable, I'm definitely not valid, whatever you call it. Um, but this is a topic that I find quite interesting, and so I'm gonna attempt it, yeah. Um, the objective is to stick to what I found in research articles, but this is a very small field of study, so I might have to draw associations or inferences here and there. Um, what I will say might not be 100% accurate, but I, I will certainly do my best, okay? So let's jump right in. Um, what is the looping effect? Well, you know, usually when we take tests such as personality tests, we rate ourselves according to our behaviours. Um, but let's flip that around. Um, and it will be the looping effect, which basically suggests that where we are classified at or how we classify ourselves um, can reflect on how we behave. Um, so let's say we are scored as more open individuals, so we begin to amplify how we seem to like trying new things such as, I don't know, hiking, because we have such, you know, openness to experiences. It's kind of like false inferences and partly still sticking to the truth, right? So I hope that analogy made sense because now we're going to move on to mental health and specifically mental health labels. So think about it this way. With how much attention is drawn to mental health awareness um, by social media, especially social media, uh, people have become more receptive and have a lot more knowledge about mental illnesses. Uh, what this then allows is for people to start identifying with a label. And unfortunately, this comes with a lot of self-interpretation um, self-diagnosis even uh, we come to a point where feeling sadder than usual can suggest feeling sadder than most people um, but I know that we should not judge someone's distress by the amount of other people facing distress too but that's also why something can be claimed as abnormal right so um, with many people claiming that they have a certain mental disorder this creates some kind of, um, let's say, domino effect, um, maybe in terms of pressure that will lead to changes in the criteria of being diagnosed with that disorder. Changes meaning a more generalised one, which means that even more people will fit the diagnostic category that they would not have been qualified for previously. This also means that um, or rather, this might cause an inclination for someone who has been put into a label to behave X of what they perceive someone with that label should show. I hope that makes sense. Um, and this is my take on it, right? But I believe that in several years' time, um, if this continues, most of us, if not all of us, will fit into a category for a mental disorder and we just might behave in a certain way because we have been told that we should be behaving that way. So I'm sorry if this comes out to be an inaccurate prediction but that's the looping effect for you. Just like the analogy I gave just now about perceiving ourselves as more open to experiences because a personality test told us about that. You know, um, the cause of all this, um, or rather partial cause of all this, I guess, owes to the publicity and the awareness that has been brought onto mental health. Um, but to be fair, it is 
human nature because of our cognitive biases, you know, whether we know that about ourselves or not. Um, it might be related to self-fulfilling prophecies or manifestation, if, if you will. But of course, I am not trying to imply that everyone who has been diagnosed with a mental disorder simply has that label put on them just because they think they are bad. No, um, if they are diagnosed with something, an event or events in their lives must have been so difficult for them that they had to end up to identify with that disorder. So please, no one's distress is being undermined here. I'm not, I'm really not trying to do that, right? But that's the looping effect. Um, I'm not sure of its extent. Um, I don't think anyone really is sure, uh, which can be explained by the very limited research on it. But it is a very interesting topic about human behaviour. There is a lot of depth to this, such as the processes of the effect on our cognition or behaviour, maybe even our physiology actually, and how our environment can shape our success, success sorry, susceptibility to fall into this effect. However, um, I'm, I'm really not here to assume what has not been found, but I believe there really is a lot of potential in this field of study. Uh, I would also like to mention that there is a similar theory, which is dynamic nominalism. It also means that we tend to fit into the labels given to us. I'm not sure if they are the same, or there's a distinction between these two theories, but there is even less research on dynamic nominalism, so that is why I'm talking about the looping effect instead. Um, there is suggestion from the looping effect that with a more general criteria that covers several levels, it might increase the amount of stigmas pinned onto a label. But in a way, right, at the same time, it's reducing the negativity around a label because now instead of a very small group of people having a mental disorder, there are more people being diagnosed, and while that sounds really unfortunate, and, and it is, it also means that um, more awareness, more support, and with more support, I presume there will be more empathy. All right. Mental health is a sensitive topic, no doubt about that, and I guess what today's topic of the looping effect has pointed out is how um, what's the word, fallible us humans have in identifying, perceiving or acting towards um, mental health and that is especially, especially of our own psychopathology. I genuinely hope that it does not sound like I've linked all mental disorders with this looping effect, um, which is completely separate and wrong, wrong to infer that I've mixed these two up. Um, it is a pretty difficult line to draw, so I apologize if I didn't phrase anything or everything well. Um, the last thing I want to do is to invalidate mental awareness or mental disorders. Rather, I believe today's discussion can be seen as more of knowledge to what contributes to our psychological processes and behaviour. After all, any stress is stressful. So um, that's my take on Ian Hacking's looping effect for you. Um, also, like a usual psychology report, uh, I have left some references in the description box in APA format. Kind of. Not sure if that's what you're supposed to do on YouTube, right? Um, you can take a look at them and see if I had interpreted um, the article's part of looping effect correctly. If not, please, please let me know. It is a topic that really piques my curiosity and interest. I hope it does the same for you. Uh, if this discussion has left you with um, you know, some thoughts, feel free to comment down below to leave me with some thoughts. Uh, I, I would actually really like 
to have some contributions um, for me to reflect upon. Um, again, I'm just a psychology student and I'm having a semester break. Um, I might actually want a hobby. You know, maybe this can be my hobby if anyone's watching at all. Yep, um, so this is basically it. Mm, see you whenever. Bye. Okay, it has been after my videoing process and I realized that my hair has been wet. Um, I kind of forgot that I bathed right after, right before filming, so. I hope that doesn't bother anyone.